One of the coolest things about shooting content in the field in a vlog format is that you really never know what you're gonna get, right? We set out today just to kind of go cruise through Coconut Creek and we had no plans at all of looking at open houses or even real estate in general, but here we are, right? People wanna know what it's like to live in Coconut Creek, Florida. It's pretty awesome, actually. And somebody like myself, who is not only a Coconut Creek resident, but I am also a small business owner whose office is located right on the borderline of Coconut Creek and two very popular surrounding towns, Boca Raton and Parkland. I strategically picked that place just because of that. And so who better than to ask than somebody else who actually lives here and works here. And today we're just gonna go ahead and do a drive through the town. Slight overcast today. Sun just popped back out. Looks pretty good. We're at the shopping center that is the Publix. The Publix shopping center, which is just south of Hillsborough Boulevard on 441 next to Johnson Road. What we'll do is we'll continue heading north on 441 towards Hillsborough because that's gonna put us out into the most north side of Coconut Creek. And then from there, we can kind of shoot east and then back south again to see the rest of Coconut Creek. I want to point something out to you. There is a new Mexican restaurant. It's called Toreros, T-O-R-E-R-O-S, Toreros Mexican Grill. This particular Mexican restaurant is actually pretty darn good. I've dined here on two occasions and both times I was impressed. So I want to go ahead and recommend that on this video. But if you're visiting Coconut Creek or you're in the surrounding area and you're looking for some decent Mexican food, check out Toreros. A second good Mexican place in Coconut Creek is Papa Migos. But Papa Migos is more of a taqueria. But both of them are actually pretty good. And that says a lot because if you've seen some of my other videos, you'll notice that I do not think very highly of restaurants in Coconut Creek. In fact, I think in Coconut Creek, one of the very few negatives about living in Coconut Creek is the quality of restaurants. We're not known for our restaurants, that's a fact. Just over here to the right-hand side at Park Creek is yours truly, office, Reform Realty, South Florida Homes and Luxury Estates. So we're coming up here on the corner of Hillsborough and 441, and we're gonna go ahead and make a right and head east on Hillsborough, because if we keep going north on 441, that becomes Boca Raton, and then we're outside of the city limits. Of course, on this corner, we have a couple major shopping centers. You have your Walmart and a couple of different sandwich places. On the right-hand side, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight how awesome this is. You have Brews Room, which is a well-known sports bar located right here in Coconut Creek. They have another location in Deerfield Beach and several other locations throughout all of South Florida. By far the best chicken wings that you're ever going to have, hands down. And really good place to go to watch the sports games. Highly recommend Brews Room for your chicken wings and your sports games. Also, I might as well give a shout out. My barber, Vulcan's Barbershop, is located right next to Brews Room. We just passed it on the right-hand side. So as we're driving here on Hillsborough Boulevard, we're headed east. Since we're over here on this side, I think it would be a good idea to take a quick drive through unincorporated part of Coconut Creek. There's a preserve here, and there's a couple of very big houses here, which you would not think otherwise existed uh, had you not driven through here by accident. So since we're here and it's kind of tucked away, let's just go ahead and go in and do a quick drive through. This is a major intersection. We're on Lyons Road, 441. Again, major shopping to be done here. Let's go ahead and pull into this area here. There we go. And we're very close to Boca Raton city limits. So back here, we have some uh, residential communities. Very nice place to live. A lot of the homes here, this is what they look like. For the most part, three bedrooms or maybe four bedroom single family homes, two stories and single stories. A lot of these have a pool located in the backyard as well as some type of lake view. If I had to guess, I would say that these homes probably start at right around $600,000 and they go up higher from there. Of course, it wasn't always like that. At one time, these homes were priced down 
in the mid to high 300 thousands, but we're going back about five years ago. And uh, today they are well upwards of 600,000 because of the extreme high demand for real estate in the South Florida market. And unless you've been hiding under a rock, you would know that people are moving here in droves for several reasons. Warm weather, beautiful beaches, lower taxes, and socio-political economic relief from other states and cities that are not favorable to live in because of the political economic conditions in the country today. Oh look, they have an open house here. Let's go in and check out the open house. All right guys, so this is a cute looking community here. I'm guesstimating that this is gonna start somewhere above 600,000, it could be a lot higher. This is the property that has the open house here today. Let's just go ahead and take a pop in, take a look. I'm knock on the door and ask the realtor if she's okay with me running film. Film and camera crew should not be an issue. in a cabana right out to the backyard. A beautiful fountain and room for a pool. Here is the den, which is in addition to the four bedrooms. We have beautiful built-ins over here. This is the master quarters. This is the primary. Mm -hmm. We have a nice sunken top, private toilet, stall shower, a private boudoir. Two nice size master closets that are both the same size. So nobody has to pick. A nice master bedroom that goes right out to the patio. And plantation shutters throughout the entire home. Nice tray ceiling in here. So that was cool. We just took the opportunity to walk through a open house on the fly. I wasn't sure exactly what the price point would be, but I knew it would be somewhere well over 600. And in this case, they were asking 699, which I think is a good price. I think they're gonna get somewhere near it. I mean, the inside of the house looked really nice. The owners of that property did a good job with the renovations and an update on the remodel. I think the only negatives about that house that I could see just with a quick look is no pool. So in that price point, you're gonna want a pool and also no hurricane impact windows and doors, which in South Florida is extremely important. They did have brackets on the window, the stucco bands for hurricane shutters, which is okay. But again, in that price point, people generally want hurricane impact windows and doors and a pool. I do think that they will get very close to what they're asking. And I also think that with the demand being as high as it is in the current marketplace, they may even very well get over what they're asking. It's very, very possible in this current environment. So we shall see. All right, where to next? Well, I'm gonna show you another secret pocket located in Coconut Creek that very few people know about and that those who do know, very few people talk about. I'm taking you down into the secret neighborhood of Coconut Creek. So these houses, big security gates, very cool. Huge, gigantic garages with the giant doors in the front so they can fit their big trucks in. Very cool. But you'll notice these big garages are generally used for the safekeeping of the boys and their toys. This really is the side of Coconut Creek that nobody ever sees. We've just looked at two highly desired subdivisions in Coconut Creek, probably the two most desired subdivisions in Coconut Creek. The construction is newer, it is nicer, it's located next to a preserve which is desirable, and also the broad majority of the homes that are in that specific division are at a much higher price point than the rest of Coconut Creek. Let's go ahead and take Lions Road. We're on Lions and Hillsboro right now. We're gonna take Lions South towards the rest of Coconut Creek. We're on the left-hand side, we have, yep, you guessed it, that's a trailer park. On the right-hand side, you have a uh, commercial industrial lot, mostly warehouses and businesses. Not our favorite part of town, but it is what it is. Incidentally, I would also add, right here on Johnson Road, if you continue west on Johnson Road from Lyons, you will find the best little church in all of South Florida. And that is Emmanuel Baptist Church, Reformed Baptist Congregation, 1689 Confessional. 
located right here in Coconut Creek, Florida. The pastors and the congregants of that church, of which that I belong, are wonderful. And I can't talk enough good things about that church. So if you're looking for a new church home, great place to consider. So what we're doing here is we're passing the Coconut Creek Fire Station. And also we have the Coconut Creek Recreational Center, which is super cool. Just tons of stuff to do here. It's new, I don't know how new it is, but it's new and it looks really new and it's well maintained. Highly recommend utilizing these features if you are a resident of Coconut Creek. I know that a lot of it is paid for by our taxes and some of it you get at a very deep discount as a resident here as part of the membership, like to use the gym facility and stuff like that. So this is really great to consider. Let's go ahead and pull out of the rec facility in Coconut Creek and we're gonna head towards this neighborhood, which again, I call Sorbet. And I did see another open house sign. So maybe we should just go take a look at another open house while we're at it. Open house signs are nice because they're an indicator that inventory is coming back on the market. Love that. Love it. Now, the home prices in this area are a little bit skewed. And the reason why I say that is because we have some single family homes here on the right hand side that are probably close to the one we just saw. The one we just saw, they were asking about 700. These ones over here are probably closer to 600. But the homes here on the left, these homes are a little bit smaller in terms of square footage. And I think they're a little bit older in terms of when they were built. Now it's a little bit deceiving because I also know that behind these homes, there's a preserve and when your home is located or it's backed up to a preserve, it's usually higher priced. So I'm going to guess, let me guess what the asking price is on this house. If I'm right, I'm right. If I'm wrong, well, then I'm wrong. I'll be corrected. So I'm gonna guess that this home is definitely going to be in a lower price point than the one that we just saw. I could just tell by driving through this neighborhood right now, the homes are a little bit older. The architectural design is just a little bit dated and the square footage is definitely smaller. I'm gonna guess and say that we're gonna be in the neighborhood of about, I'm gonna say under 600,000. Let's call it 550. And that, by the way, is in a favorable seller's market. High end, high end meaning high priced. Here we are. Let's see if this person will allow us to film. One of the coolest things about shooting content in the field in a vlog format is that you really never know what you're gonna get, right? We set out today just to kind of go cruise through Coconut Creek and we had no plans at all of looking at open houses or even real estate in general, but here we are, right? So this is the second open house that we're coming up on here today, this home right here. The neighborhood is nice. It's a little bit different from the neighborhood we just came from and just at first glance, it seems as if I, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is probably gonna be listed somewhere in the 550 range. Let's take a look and see. This is fascinating. Open format. Love how they opened it up. They have these modern barn doors here, which look to separate the den. See that pool in the distance? We'll take a look at that in a little bit. They went with a tan colored subway tile backsplash and an off-white color on the cabinets with bronze hardware, stainless steel appliances, and the countertops look to be marble, which are actually really pretty. Formal dining area in the distance there. What is the asking price, please? 629, oh, I was wrong, I was wrong, I was wrong. So I guesstimated on camera outside what the asking price might be. I said under six, but I also specified that if I was wrong, I would be corrected. 629 is the asking price. Well, we can't always be right. So the pool, the open concept and the renovation certainly changes a lot. I guess that's the risk to take when you don't know what you don't know. Privacy fence, very good. Here's something cool I wanna point out to you. You see how the chairs are in the pool and they have like this section right here and then that section drops off down to the pool. We call that a beach. This road right here is a very quiet private road. But here's what I don't like, guys. I think those might be trailers. Those might be mobile homes that we're looking at there in the distance on the other side of that fence. So what we'd like to do is maybe grow these shrubs higher trampoline, 
Then there's the steps and the beach that I was just mentioning to you. Oh, that's cool. Look at that. They have a little um, little gate. <laughs> it's a little gate. Maybe little ones. Keep the little ones on the other side of the gate. Seeing these homes in Coconut Creek and the renovations they've done kind of make me feel like I need to re do a renovation of my house. Should I renovate my house? It's always nice to have a bathroom with a door that goes right outside to the patio. Cool house, nice house. I prefer the first house because location, location, location. That's always the golden rule in real estate because you can always change your kitchen. You can always change your bathrooms. You can always change the pool deck, but you can't change the location. And this one was backed up to a road and just behind that road looked to be a trailer park. You can't change that. Whereas the first house, it was uh, backed up to a lake. The only thing that beats a lake is the intercoastal or the ocean. So the first home, rightfully so, was priced a little bit higher at 699. This home was priced at 629, 629. And again, I was unaware of the renovations, the open format and the pool. So naturally I was underpriced based on my assumption just of the neighborhood, driving through and seeing what the neighborhood looks like. So our journey continues. South of Winston Park, where I live, we have two major places of interest. One is called the Coconut Creek Promenade. Probably leave that to the end of the video. And also the Coconut Creek Casino, which is pretty cool too. Those really are the big to-dos in Coconut Creek. So we're gonna drive through Winston Park subdivision in Coconut Creek, just west of Lions Road, to give you a glimpse of what the houses look like over there. This is my neighborhood. Again, I live here and I would say home prices start approximately about $650,000 as of the date of the making of this video. And we're on the back end of a major real estate rally here in South Florida where a lot of properties were for sale for a total of one week, multiple offers, people bidding $25,000, $50,000, $150,000 over the asking price. Absolutely insane. Personally, I've been involved in transactions that look just like that. It happened, it really happened. I live to tell the story. These homes in here are both single story and two story homes. They're located on the lake, backed up to preserve, and they're really nice homes. These ones here, they would sell for well over 700,000. For the most part, they're renovated on the inside. Again, this is a desirable neighborhood to live in, in Coconut Creek. All right, so just east of Winston Park is a park and preserve with nature walk trails and a tot lot, which I commonly bring my family to, to hang out. Oh, and I see another open house sign. Shall we venture into the third open house for the day? I think maybe we will. Let's first take a quick drive into the park here and we can take a quick look at what's available. We have our tennis ball courts, racquetball courts, basketball courts, beach volleyball courts, tot lot with swings and slides and cool little things to play with for the kids. They do have the public restrooms, which is nice, and the nature walk and preserve trail, which is really cool. They have a lot of different type of trees and plants that they put there, and they conveniently label them with like signs that stick into the ground telling you exactly what type of tree or plant that is, which is pretty interesting. Now, I don't claim to be an arborist or anything, but uh, it is nice to know that there are different types of trees that you're looking at really helps you appreciate them. Let's go ahead and venture deeper into this neighborhood and let's see if we can find that third open house sign. Man, I have to tell you, it's refreshing to see more inventory back on the market. You know, for six months, it was almost like nothing was there. Nothing, nothing was available. Inventory was so low. Now it's coming back, thank God. Now realtors can actually get some more business done because it was deadlocked, it was frozen before. So based on what I know, about this city, about this neighborhood. Let's try to guess what the third property is listed at. Based on the last two homes, one being at about six and a quarter, the other one being at about 700, me telling you that homes in my neighborhood, which is just down the street, sell for an average of about 650. 
I'm gonna tell you that this one here, judging by the way from the outside, the way it looks, I can't tell if there's a pool here or not. The windows are original and the front elevation of the home has like an older brick look, which is not as new as what the traditional stucco look is in Florida. I'm gonna guess that this property is gonna be listed around six and a quarter. Let's see how close I am. One of the first things I noticed as soon as I walked in is the place smells like cinnamon candles and they have Christmas decorations up, which is pretty funny because we're in August. So they have an oversized island. It looks like they have mahogany cabinetry, bronze hardware, tiled backsplash, marble countertops with routed edges, stainless steel appliances throughout, vaulted ceilings and formal dining room. That room in the back over there is the master bedroom. We have a split bedroom design. We have our guest rooms on the other side of the house. Master bedroom suite has the attached bathroom and you can call it his and hers, but really it's just one big closet and vanity sink, which is actually separate. See the vanity sink here is separate from this sink here. So call it a sink slash commode with the shower. Right there. I see the chain link fence, which looks like it separates your yard from the neighbor's yard. And the neighbor has a privacy fence, which is good because you actually reap the benefit of your neighbor's privacy fence because that's privacy for you too. Oh, thank you. Asking price again? 589. 589 is the asking price. Again, I stand corrected. So the house did not have a pool. The backyard was decent, but it backed up to somebody else's fence. Naturally, given the age of the home, under 600,000 is an appropriate price point. And I agree with the listing agent's pricing on that. Either way, they will not have a problem selling that house. This is a desirable area. Those price points are affordable. They're gonna do just fine. We are going to head south on Lions Road, continue going south on Lions Road, and we're gonna stop off at the, uh-oh, there's an accident. All right, we're back online. There was a very bad accident here and uh, I can't see what happened. It does not look good, that's for sure. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go to the Coconut Creek Promenade. We're just gonna take a different road to get there. Once we're finished with the promenade, I think what we might do is we'll go a little bit further south to the Coconut Creek Casino and uh, check that out too. So here we are, we're on Hillsborough Boulevard and Wiles. Again, mostly shopping, but there's some good stuff over here. You have Chick-fil-A, can't go wrong with Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A is phenomenal. We also have a couple of different ice cream places, Home Depot, Batteries Plus. These are all places that I shop at, as well as the Coconut Creek Promenade, which we're headed to right now, which is located, by the way, right next to Coconut Creek High School. And inside the Coconut Creek Promenade, you have your boutique shopping, restaurants, bars, and other services like the Venetian Nail Spa, for example, DSW, Shoe Store. These are all places that I frequent whenever I go to do what I need to do. This is probably the one place that I spend most time at in Coconut Creek, but I will also add, it's one of the only few places that there is to spend any time at within Coconut Creek. It's good, it's still good. I wanna specify this. And I'm just gonna be completely upfront. Coconut Creek is not known for their great restaurants. It's not. We have very few good restaurants, let alone any great restaurants. We have one, one great restaurant, and I've talked about it in depth on my YouTube channel. And that one great restaurant is located at the Coconut Creek Casino, and it is the New York Yankee Steakhouse. It's absolutely phenomenal. I give it four, maybe five stars, and you should definitely visit there. Check the menu before you go. It's very pricey. Also, make a reservation because they fill up fast. Other than that, Coconut Creek really does not have much great dining. Ethos, which is a Greek restaurant in the promenade, is pretty decent. The other restaurants within the promenade suck. They're not good. They're just not. The food is not good. The service is really not great. World of Beer, on the other hand, is a good place to get a drink. Drinks are good. Service at World of Beer is good. What's not good is the service as it pertains to the food at World of Beer. So first of all, what type of food do you expect to get at World of Beer? It's bar food, so it's nothing fancy. But for bar food, the food is decent, but there's something going on in the kitchen over there, man, because whenever you order something, it takes forever to come out. You know, that's a problem they have yet to fix, and it's always something that keeps me saying, hey, I'll never come back here to eat again, and we don't as a result of that. But if you're looking to grab a nice beer or to have a good time or hear some live music, World of Beer is definitely a good spot to go. Other than that, not much else. Really not much else. I do go to the Venetian Nail Spa. I do go to the Silver 
Spot Cinema, which is the movie theater here at Coconut Creek, which is pretty awesome, actually. One of the best cinemas I've ever been to. And then you have your other places like Starbucks and stuff like that, which you hear too, which are also fine. All right, guys, so there's three other places that I want to point out on our journey through Coconut Creek. Now, I'm cheating a little bit on these three because these three are actually located on the outskirts of Coconut Creek. More so the city of Margate, but I'm talking about like right on the outskirt, right on the line. And those three places are as follows. La Bamba Mexican Restaurant, Picanha Brazilian Grill, and the last place is gonna be a surprise. I'll hold it for last. But here we are right now at La Bamba. <laughs> so it just so happens that there are collectively three really decent Mexican restaurants in the Coconut Creek slash Margate area. You can't miss with either three of those restaurants. I know I just got finished telling you about how there's a lack of really good restaurants in Coconut Creek. Well, <laughs> they can check the box for Mexican restaurants. They pretty much got that down solid because they are good restaurants. So La Bamba, Pop Amigos, and Toreros in Coconut Creek slash Margate are exceptional Mexican restaurants that you should consider. And now the other restaurant, which you should also consider, is not phenomenal or amazing or wonderful. It's just good. You know, like like a good restaurant. Like, like you can just go and have a good meal, be impressed with the food and not pay an arm and a leg. And that's Picanha Brazil Steakhouse, which again is on the borderline of Coconut Creek and Margate. So if you know anything about Brazilian food, they do that Rodizio style, which is barbecue style that they serve rotisserie on a skewer and from the skewer, they slice the meat onto your plate. And this particular restaurant, they take your plate and they weigh your plate and they charge you based on the ounce or the pound or the kilogram. I'm not sure what weight measure they use, but they charge you based on how much your plate weighs. It is not an expensive restaurant. It's a decent restaurant. The service is decent. The caipariñas, that's the cocktail that they make, are absolutely phenomenal. My favorite, the picanha, which is like a top sirloin, is absolutely phenomenal too. You really can't go wrong. We frequent that restaurant a lot. Go ahead and add that one to the list, even though we're on the outskirts. Now, as you head into South Coconut Creek, you are officially bordering Coconut Creek with Margate and Coral Springs. Just southwest of Coconut Creek is Coral Springs, and just south of Coconut Creek is Margate. So as you get to the edge there on Sample and 441, you start to border each other, which brings me to our second to last destination on this journey. And that is my favorite, the American Top Team. This is the Coral Springs slash Margate location, which is just down the street from the Coconut Creek headquarter location where all the professional fighters train that you still see in the UFC. So we're gonna stop in here tonight. We're gonna get a good workout in. And then after our workout, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna see the very last place on our Coconut Creek list. Let's go. All right, tough workout is now complete. If it looks like I got my butt kicked, it's because I did, <laughs> if you can't tell. At least you got that workout in. That's the most important thing. We drove down the street and we were at the Coconut Creek Casino. Check it out. Well, okay, friends, as this evening and this tour draws to an end, we're gonna head north on 441 from Sample Road, where Coconut Creek Casino is, back over to Park Creek, where Reform Realty, South Florida Homes and Luxury Estates headquarters is. And we're gonna go ahead and finish the night at the office, responding to your messages, emails, text messages, because we love to hear from you guys. We love the feedback. So if you haven't already, please take this opportunity to me right now to click the subscribe button below. Don't forget to ring the bell so you can be first to be notified whenever I drop brand new content of what it's like to live in South Florida. As always, I wish you many blessings. Take care.